In this video I'm going to show you how to draw the schematic for a motor that's powered by a battery and controlled by a pin on the Arduino. I've already opened up a new project, I've opened up the schematic, I filled in the title block, changed the page size. For this one I'm not going to include the Arduino on the schematic as I did with the LED, but just do the components for the motor. What I have to place is a transistor, a resistor, a motor, and a battery, some symbols, and then wire them all together. So I'll click on A to place a new part. Click on A to place a new part. And then resistor, I'm going to use the US resistor, so R underscore US will get us the US resistor. Click OK. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the schematic. That resistor is oriented the way I'm um, up and down. I want it sideways. So click the R key, get that placed. Then A to place a component. And then for the transistor, Q is the symbol for a transistor. And underscore, and then NPN. And there's a number of different types of NPN transistors. The TIP120 that we're using to control the motor is a Darlington type and from left to right its pins are base, collector, and emitter. So I'm going to choose this QNPN Darlington BCE. You could choose this QNPN BCE. The difference between the two is subtle. It doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and do the Darlington. Click OK. Put that on the schematic. Next, I've got the motor, so click A, then type in motor, and I've got servo motors and stepper motors and AC motors, and then the one I want, which is a DC motor. So select that one, click OK, and then we'll put that on the schematic above the transistor. Last thing we need is the battery, which we'll put over on the right hand side. Click A, bring up the parts, search, type in battery. Then I've got my choice of a single cell battery or a multiple cell battery. I'm going to choose a single cell battery, even though the 12 volt battery does have multiple cells, but just for convenience, I'll choose the single cell battery schematic. Click OK, then we'll put that on the schematic somewhere. Oh, we'll place it about here. Okay, and then I'll hit escape. I'm going to go ahead and fill in some of the numbers for the resistor. I know it's a 1K resistor with a capital K. Okay, the Darlington transistor, the part number of the transistor is a TIP, TIP, going to use all caps, TIP120. Click OK. The motor, I'm going to just leave it as motor DC. Even though it's a gear motor, um, I'm going to just leave it as motor DC. And then the battery, I'm going to put in the voltage of the battery, so 12 volts. And OK. Now I'm going to put in couple of symbols. I'm going to put in a ground symbol. So I'll hit the, um, I'll hit the power, place power port, and I'm going to put the ground symbol below the transistor. So click on ground, click OK. Now I've got the ground. We're going to click it uh, below the transistor and then hit escape and then hit home to recenter. Zoom in a little bit, see where we are. Then the last thing I'm going to place is a global label and put that to the left of the resistor. And I'm going to give that a pin four because that's going to be controlled by pin four of the Arduino. Click OK, park it in place hit escape. Okay, things are looking pretty good. Let's wire things up with the wiring. So I'll hit 
W and then go from the label over to the resistor, resistor over to the base of the transistor, collector of the transistor to the minus of the motor, emitter of the transistor to ground, and then the top of the motor up, click to make a corner, over, click, and then down to the positive of the battery. And then the minus of the battery goes over to ground. And you notice when I clicked it does a does a big circle, a big dot to indicate that those two wires are connected rather than crossing over each other. I'm just going to show you one thing. So hit escape to get out of wire mode. And I'm going to delete this wire hover, hit the delete key, and then hover, hit the delete key. The, the other way that I could have chosen to do that ground is go over to this ground symbol C to copy it and then placed it and wired it. So my wire got a little bit out of control there. Hover, delete, then hover, delete. Now hit wire and click. Okay. So the other way to indicate the ground is to connect the minus of the battery straight to ground. I'm going to go back and do it the first way that I had it. Things are looking pretty good on this. The last remaining thing to do is to give numbers to all of the components. Go up and click annotate schematic. Use the entire schematic. Keep existing annotations. I don't have any, so that's fine. Click annotate, then close, and now I see everything is numbered. R1, M1, battery 1, and transistor 1. Q is the letter that's used to indicate transistors. Now for a complete schematic, I'd have to show where this pin 4 is coming from, so I'd have to have some indication that there is an Arduino in the picture. Could do it with the Arduino up in the left-hand corner, as I showed before or I could do it by placing a note. So if I hit T, the add text, I could put Arduino connections as a note. Click OK. And then I could put that right over the top. So for example, if I had a number of pins all lined up, I could put this indication that it's Arduino connections on the top of it. And then I'd also probably want to do something like uh, place a global label over here, indicate ground, indicating that it's the Arduino ground, put it underneath my other one, indicating that these are all coming from the Arduino, and then wire it. wire it over to my existing ground or another way I could have done that we'll hover over that hit delete I could hover over my ground symbol C to copy put another ground symbol over here and then wire the indication from the Arduino ground hit the W key click and down to that ground. So that'd be another way of doing it. So a number of different ways that you can do that indication. You could have the Arduino symbol on the top left of your schematic as we did for the LED video. Uh, you could do it as shown here. Um, or there's a, another way that there's a symbol in there that's a whole template for if you want to do a Arduino shield. So it's really up to the designer whatever way you think makes it the easiest for the reader of the schematic to understand what's going on.